You are listening to Torah Treasures, a messianic perspective on the weekly Torah portion, featuring Rabbi Jason Sobel. This week's Torah portion is Parshat Yitro. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 1, we read the following, And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth below or in the waters. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. How many of the Ten Commandments did God directly speak to the children of Israel at Sinai? Did they hear all of them directly from the mouth of God or only some? What is this meant to teach us? Our sages disagree on the number of commandments that our ancestors heard at Sinai. Maimonides, for example, says that Israel only heard God directly speak the first two commandments. The Midrash teaches that they heard all ten commandments, which is correct. According to Rashi, both are. In Exodus 21 we read, God spoke all these statements. The phrase, all these statements, seems to be entirely unnecessary if God had only spoken the first two commandments. Thus Rashi teaches that God miraculously spoke all of the Ten Commandments in one incomprehensible utterance. Then, God clearly articulated the first two commandments word for word. After hearing God speak the first two commandments, the people feared that they could not continue to hear the voice of God and live. So they asked that Moses communicate the rest of the commandments to them. Although the Torah does not explicitly state that God clearly communicated only the first two commandments, there is biblical support for this view. The grammar of the Ten Commandments itself seems to support this conclusion. The first two commandments are spoken in the first person. I am the Lord your God, commandment number one. You must not have any other gods before me, commandment number two. Whereas in the other commandments, God speaks in the third person, you shall not. The fact that the first two commandments are placed together in the same paragraph, while all the others are separated, also alludes to the unique way in which they are communicated, me'am loes. The way God communicated the Ten Commandments to us at Sinai reveals several important spiritual truths about the Torah. Based upon God's miraculous, incomprehensible utterance of the Ten Commandments, we learn that the Torah is a unified, inseparable whole. The Ten Commandments cannot be separated from the rest of God's mitzvot, His commandments. All are equally God's word and will for our lives, and, as such, we should strive to understand and live out all of them, as Rabbi Yehuda says in Perkei Avot. Be as scrupulous in performing a minor commandment as you are in performing a major one, for you do not know the reward for each. We cannot therefore conclude that it is acceptable to keep only the weightier matters of the Torah while disregarding the lesser aspects, even if we believe that it is humanly impossible to keep all of them. Matthew 23, 23, James 2.10 God's direct articulation of the first two commandments teaches us to be especially mindful of cultivating faith and trust in God alone and to be on guard against creating and worshiping idols. Thus, the first two commandments had to be heard clearly by Israel, for they are the foundation and bedrock of the Torah as is evidenced in the words of the Shema, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord alone. Believing that there is one all-powerful Creator and Redeemer who alone is worthy of worship is the prerequisite of obeying God and keeping all of God's commandments. As the author of the Hebrews writes, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. 
Hebrews 11.6.